Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pharmaceutical Calculations Solve Along. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at henderson hesselbach equation and we are going to actually spotlight seven key example questions that I believe every student should be able to solve. So if you are watching this session live, then be sure to leave your questions in the chat box. If you are watching the re replay, then just put your questions in the comment section. I'll get to them as soon as I see them. Now. If this is your first time joining us, I'd like to share a lot of tips, tricks, and strategies on how you can master pharmaceutical calculations. If you like this type of content, then be sure to subscribe. And if you like the video, just click the like button so that other students can also see this wonderful content. Now, to get started, it's important that we have some baseline understanding on what we are about to talk about. I'm not going too much into the concepts. We just want to focus on how you apply these equations. But to be sure that we're on the same page, it's important to give some very clear background so that we are on an, the same kind of footing. So I just wanted to start off with what the buffer actually is. A buffer is a system whose pH changes only slightly when you have small amounts of an acid or a base added to it. And the reason that's the case is, is because it's made up of typically a weak acid and the salt of the acid. Now, the salt of the acid is sometimes called the conjugate base. That is made up of a weak base and the salt of the base, also known as the conjugate. So in terms of examples, I just want to share some very commonly used examples, one for each scenario. So when you have a weak acid and the salt of the acid, an example would be acetic acid together with sodium acetate. In the instance where you have a weak base and the salt of the base, a common example is ammonium hydroxide together with the salt of ammonium hydroxide, which would be ammonium chloride. Now, how do buffers work? Typically, the way the buffer works is you have this weak acid and the salt of the acid. And if, for example, you put in some small amount of sodium hydroxide, the base, that base is going to react with the weak acid to form the salt of the acid. So the buffer forms some kind of a shield in your system that allows you to minimize the changes in pH that is likely to occur when it encounters some kind of change in uh, an acid or a base. Now, the reason this is important, especially in pharmaceutic or pharmaceutic houses, there are some ingredients which tend to be very pH sensitive. So if you put them in an area where the pH changes, the substance would degrade. That example would be your antibiotics. So you really want to think about the buffer as a a protective shield for your formulation or for whatever it is that you're interested in doing. This buffer works based on the concentration of your elements in the buffer. So there's a line here which says the concentration of the buffer is greater than or equal to the added concentration of hydrogen ions, which is coming from the acid, or hydroxide ions, which is coming from the base. What that means actually is your buffer has a certain capacity. And that buffer capacity actually is the ability of the buffer to resist the changes in pH. So the buffer capacity depends on the relative concentration of the buffer components and also the ratio of those components. So what that means is if you kept on adding a lot of base to a buffer system, which is made up of a weak acid and, and the salt of the acid, eventually it's not going to work because the amount of base that you're introducing would overpower the amounts of your acid in there. So this is just a high level. Now, if you really want me to do an in-depth discussion on what buffers are, then you may want to just put that in the comments or just maybe click the like button and I can follow up with a more thorough conceptual discussion of what buffer system is. But I thought this is important just to ensure that we're on the same page when it comes to what we are talking about for the questions that we'll be looking at. So I'm just going to goes right to what the questions are for these henderson hasselbach and then we'll see how we apply them. For your henderson hasselbach equations, the uh, two sets that we want to basically keep stenciled on the mind. The first one is for weak acids. Now, in weak acids, the equation typically is given as your pH being equal to your pKa plus the log of the concentration of the salt over the concentration of the acid. So that's the first system. This is for your weak acid. So this is the equation you typically will be using for, say, an example where you have 
acetic acid and then the salt of the acid which will be sodium acetate the other set which is based on the weak base system is where you have the equation being equal to your ph is equal to pkw now pkw is basically the negative log of the ionization constant for water and that's equal so your pH is equal to your pkw minus pkb plus the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the salt so these two equations are very important um you want to be able to use them now the way the henderson hasselbach equation works is it, it allows you to do a number of things the first thing is it allows you to calculate the ph of your buffer system if you know the composition so for example if you take a look at the weak acids once you know the concentration of the salt and acid and the pka of your system you can easily calculate the ph that's one thing you can do the other thing that your henderson hasselbach equation allows you to do is essentially calculate the molar ratios of the components of your buffer system and that's important because sometimes you need to know exactly how much to weigh and things of that nature so the henderson hasselbach equation allows you to do that the third thing that it actually can let you do is determine the change in your ph once you've added some a small amount of acid or base so we are going to take a look at a number of examples where we are actually going to use all of these um, ideas to solve some of the requirements in there so hopefully this gives a very quick basically overview of what is expected and then we can proceed now to solve some of these questions so once again if you have any questions just leave them in the chat box and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. And if you're watching the replay, then be sure to leave your questions in the comments. So let's start off with the first question. And here the question actually states, what is the pH of a buffer solution prepared with 0 0.055 molar sodium acetate and 0 0.01 molar acetic acid the pa the pka value of acetic acid is 4.76 at 25 degrees celsius so when you have this type of question the first thing is classify it okay what do we have here as our buffer system is it a weak acid and the salt of the acid or is it a weak base and the salt of the base now here is pretty clear because it tells you essentially that what you have is sodium acetate now you may not really immediately recall that this is the salt of the acid but you certainly can detect from the question that when it says acetic acid this definitely is an acid so you have a weak acid and the salt of the acid which implies that the version of the henderson hasselbach equation that you really want to use here is your ph being equal to the pka plus the log of the concentration so these square brackets are denoting concentration of the salt over the concentration of the acid so once again what's your your salt your salt is the sodium acetate the concentration is 0 0.055 now the uppercase m is molar and molar is actually moles per liter so that's concentration now the other thing you also want to pay attention to is here you're actually given your pka as 4.76 now the ka is the acid dissociation constant and sometimes you, you are given the ka instead of the pka what you want to do in that instance is actually find pka and pka is given as the negative log to the base 10 of your ka value all right so sometimes you're not giving the pka directly but you can easily calculate that now having said all that we are at a point where we can actually utilize the henderson hasselbach equation for weak acid weak base to solve this question and what we want to do is simply plug in the numbers so our pka is given as 4.76 plus the log of the concentration of the salt so we're going to put the 0 0.055 and divide that by the 0 0.01 and if you do the math correctly if 5.5 so this is one of those examples where 
we've used the Henderson Hasselbalch equation to determine the pH of a system given the components that are in there. All right. So hopefully that was useful. Let's move on to the next example. So this question says, what molar ratio of salt to acid would be required to prepare a buffer solution with a pH of 4.5? The pKa value of the acid is 4.05 at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, we have an interesting question here. This time, we are going to use the henderson hasselbalch equation to determine the molar ratio. Now, what exactly is this molar ratio? Um, let's get to it, but to do that we need to use the appropriate version of the henderson hasselbalch equation so once again we have an acid so it said and we have the salt so the version of the equation that we really want to use here is your ph is equal to p k a plus the log of your concentration of salt over the concentration of the acid now here the molar ratio that the question is actually referring to is this portion of the equation. That's the molar ratio that the question is referring to. So the number of ways you could approach this, you could simply plug in the numbers, or alternatively, you can rearrange the equation, get something suitable, and then plug in the numbers afterwards. So let's use that approach. Let's actually rearrange this equation so that we get the molar ratio by itself. The way you're going to do that is you're going to subtract the pKa from both sides. So you're going to end up with pH minus pKa log of the concentration of salt of acid. And the way that you get rid of the log is you take the anti-log. So you're going to raise the pH minus pKa. You're going to raise that. So 10 to the power pH minus pK, that's the anti-log, and you do the same thing on the right-hand side. Now, 10 to the power log is basically 1, and so essentially what you are going to end up having is concentration of salt over concentration of acid can be quickly calculated by doing 10 to the power pH minus pKa. So now at this point, we can go ahead and basically plug in our values that we know from the question and what that will look like then is you have your concentration of salt over concentration of acid going to be equal to 10 to the power pH now pH in the question is given as 4.5 so we do 4.5 minus 4.05 which is the pKa And if you do the math correctly, this ratio is going to end up being 2.82 is to 1. So that's the molar ratio. So in the beginning, I, you know how I mentioned that you can use the henderson hasselbalch equation for three things. The first one is to calculate the pH once you know the composition. The second thing is to calculate the molar ratios once you And then the other thing is to calculate the change in pH. So we'll still example where we do calculate the change in pH. But these, are, these two examples illustrate the first two ways in which you typically will end up using the henderson hasselbalch equation. So we're going to move on to the next example, another powerful one, which we are going to basically explore right now. And the question essentially states, what is the change in pH on adding 0 0.02 mole of sodium hydroxide to one liter of a buffer solution containing 0.5 molar of sodium acetate and 0.5 molar acetic acid. The pKa value of acetic acid is given as 4.76 at 25 degrees Celsius. So this is an example of the third scenario where you are likely to use the henderson hasselbalch equation. We are going to calculate change in pH. So the way we do that is we first calculate the pH before adding the base to the system and then we calculate what the ph is after you've added the base and then we find the difference that's how you determine the change 
So let's start off with what the pH is, sodium acetate, acetic acid. So we need to use the equation that is suitable for weak acid, weak, um, weak acid and the salt of the acid system. Okay. So pH here, once again, is going to be equal to your pKa plus log of the concentration of salt over the concentration of acid. Okay, so you want to memorize this equation, especially if you have an exam coming up, so that you can be very fluid and fluent in your calculation. Now, all we are going to do at this point is plug in the value. So you want to be real specific here. Your pKa is 4.76. In this question, both the concentration of the salt and the acid is the same, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That's your salt, that's your acid. So it doesn't really matter. You can't get it wrong it anyhow because the number. But we want to put in the values here. So your P0.76 plus the log of 0 0.5 over 0 0.5. Now the log of 1, because 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 is 1, log of 1 is 0. So your pH here is going to be equal to 4.76. Basically, your pH is equal to the pKa value because the concentrations of your salt and acid are the same. Now, what happens when you do add the base to the system? That's where we want to see how good the buffer is. Okay? So it's important to stress here that what we are adding here is 0 0.02 moles of the base. But notice that the amounts or the values that have been given for the salt and the acid are all concentration. So we want to first in terms of thoroughness, convert the molar values to moles, then make the adjustments, and then convert that to concentration. So that sounds like a mouthful, but what exactly we are doing is, if you take 0 0.5, maybe let me just write that out here, 0 0.5 molar. 0 0.5 molar implies that you have 0 0.5 moles per liter. If you wanted to find the moles of sodium acetate, we need to multiply that by the volume of the buffer. Our volume is one liter. So if we did that by one liter, basically your value stays the same. So you have 0 0.5 mole of the acetate. Okay, so let's just put here acetate. Acetate. Now we could do a similar thing for the ac acetic acid but we know the value is going to be exactly the same, but let's just do that for thoroughness. And I'm going through all these steps, but once you understand it, you don't need to go like all this granular level. But if you need to do that to steady, that's a good way to get started. So once again, it's 0 0.5 mole per liter. The volume of the system, buffer system is one liter. The liters cancel out and you have 0 0.5 mole. This is where you need some real recollection of what happens when you do add the base to the system. So perhaps what we need to do is just illustrate what happens when you do add the base to the system. Originally, what you have is acetic acid. Acetic acid is basically CH3, COOH, and acts with the acid, and then it's going to produce more of the salt. Okay, so that's an important concept because when you add the sodium hydroxide, it's going to essentially decrease increase the salt um, mole value by whatever amount you did add of the base. That's why this equation is kind of important in terms of understanding. So I'm going to repeat it for emphasis. When you do add the base, sodium hydroxide, to your buffer system, this is what happens. The hydroxide, sodium hydroxide reacts with the acetic acid. The, it chews up an equivalent amount of whatever base you put in there and it makes an equivalent amount more of the salt in the system all right so your molar value of the or the mole the amount of moles of your acetic acid will decrease by in this example 0 0.02 and the amount of your sodium acetate will increase of your acetic acid will decrease by in this example 0 0.02 and the amount 0 0.02 all right now that's significant because our pH is actually going to look slightly different this time. So pH is going to be equal to 4.76 because the same equation we are using. 
plus the log of the concentration of the salt. So we started off with 0 0.5 mole. You add the 0 0.02 mole extra, which comes from generating this much more acetate. Ideally, this value is mole, and you divide by the volume. But since the volume is one liter, it essentially stays the same numbers. And then in the denominator, the acid, which is 0 0.5, also 5 mole, will decrease by 0 0.02 moles. You theoretically and properly need to divide that value by essentially the volume of the system, which is still 1. So this number stays the same. Now, the reason they stay the same is because your volume in there is 1. Other than that, it may change slightly. But having said all that, we can now go ahead and proceed with the simplification. So now your pH is going to be equal to 4.76 plus the log of 0 0.52 divided by 0 0.48. And once you've done this, then you can go ahead and calculate the value. This turns out to be 4.79. And so your change in pH is going to be the difference between the 4.79 and the 4.76. So for completeness, the delta here represents change. So change in pH is going to be equal to 4.79 minus 4.76. And you end up with 0 0.03 units. So very minimal effect. All right, so very minimal effect. So. With these three examples, we've looked at, you know, three ways that you can end up using the henderson helsebach equation. But let's go through an additional example. Now, just to recap, because I feel it's important to emphasize this, most of the action is happening right here. You need to understand what exactly goes on when you do stress your buffer with either the base or the acid. Here we are, the weak acid and the salt system, and we, we stress that with a little bit of base. And when that happens, the amount of salt increases by the mole amount of your base, and then the amount of acid decreases as well by the mole amount of your base. All right? But nonetheless, this is useful if you need to go through one more time. That's fine. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments, and I will address them as soon as I see them. Now, let's move on to the next example. So here the question says the molar ratio of salt to acid needed to prepare a sodium acetate acetic acid buffer solution is one to one. Assuming that the total buffer concentration is 0 0.1 mole per liter, how many grams of the sodium acetate with molecular weight 82 should be used in preparing two liters of the solution? So here, we are actually doing something that may be more intuitive or practical. We want to know how much of the sodium acetate, which essentially is the salt, to actually compose your buffer system. So we want to weigh it out. We want to go to the weighing balance, weigh out the amount, and then prepare our buffer. That's what this question is actually trying to simulate. There are a number of things we need to pay attention to. In this question, we really don't need to use the handle, but it's a useful concept in terms of a useful question for illustrating a concept that comes associated with your buffer system. All right? So the way this works actually is we need to, first of all, determine the total moles in the buffer system or the solution. All right? And the way we do that is we take the concentration, which is 0 0.1, mole per liter that's the total buffer concentration we take that value and we multiply that by the volume of the buffer all right so we start off by determining essentially your total moles okay and that's going to be equal to try let's just write this out completely total moles and that's going to be equal to one mole per liter which is your concentration 
of the buffer system and you multiply that by the volume which is 2 liters now the liters cancel out so your total moles is 0 0.2 moles what we need to do now is determine the moles of the sodium acetate okay out of this total 0 0.2 mole what contribution is coming from the sodium acetate and so the way you do that is to determine the molar ratio so here we are interested in determining the moles of sodium acetate okay so we need to first determine the molar ratio now the ratio here one to one so on the mole ratio will be the moles of the acetate to the total moles all right so essentially you have one one part acid one part salt or one part salt one part acid so the total part is two which means your parts of the acetate is one so one out of two one part acetate or salt to a total part of the one plus one that's how you get the two so if you multiply this fraction which is half by the total mole value that will give you the moles of the acetate that you do need which would be 0 0.1 now here because of how the numbers play out is is actually almost easy to do this by inspection it's one to one so you expect half of the moles to come from the salt half to come from the acid but where the numbers are different like maybe 10 to 1 you really want to pay attention to how the molar or the mole ratio portion works so that you can actually get the real value but nonetheless we have 0 0.1 moles of sodium acetate in this preparation now this is important because we are going to quickly recall that your moles is x over molecular weight so with this equation we can quickly calculate the mass because the question gave us the molecular weight so we're interested in mass so mass is going to be equal to moles times molecular weight and that's going to be equal to the 0 0.1 which we just calculated let's put the mole there times the molecular weight which is 82 gram per mole so the mole cancels out and this value is actually equal to 8.2 grams All right, so this actually is a very, very um, important aspect of this type of calculations. I do know quite a number of students tend to struggle, and most of the issue comes with the mole portion of it, which is calculating the total moles and identifying the contribution of whatever they are calculating, whether it's the salt or the acid. Determining the mole fraction can be tricky sometimes, but you want to pay attention to that. The, sus the subsequent portions tend to be fairly straightforward, but most of the errors I do see happen here or here. All right. But nonetheless, this is a good example. So just review it and you'll be ultra competent and confident. Oh, we do have some comments in the question in the chat. So I'm just going to see whether we can highlight some of them. We have here so the first comment is uh these are quite tough well um to be tough initially but that's why we are doing some of these practice questions once you go through them trust me you'll be ultra competent and no need for you to sweat it at all so initially it's tough it's just a little bit of practice and if you have more questions you're able to go deeper into the topic and your understanding explodes and all of them become ultra easy as you you go through it so uh, i am with you but that's why we are here to help you get through some of these uh, potentially challenging topics but at the end of the day it tends to be fairly easy so thanks for joining from new zealand i believe and uh, it's good evening there. It's also evening. I mean, it's evening here. I don't know what time it is at your end. So thanks for joining. Excellent comment. Um, I appreciate your comments as well. All right. So let's get back right to the where we kind of um, left off. We had just the fourth example, I believe. 
So we have essentially about three more. So let's go. Let's get right to it. So here, the question is, what is the change in pH? Another change in pH with the addition of 0 0.01 mole hydrochloric acid to a liter of a buffer solution containing 0 0.05 molar of ammonia and 0 0.05 molar of ammonium chloride. The pKb value of ammonia is 4.74 at 25 degrees Celsius. So here, once again, the way you do change in pH is you first calculate the pH without stre the stress in the system, and then you calculate the pH after you've added, in this example, the acid, and then we find the difference. Now, it's important to mention here that this is the first example I think we've encountered right now where we have a weak base and the salt of the base. So we are going to see how that changes in terms of the version of the equation that we do want to use. So the equation that we want to use is the version for weak bases, and that is your pH is equal to your pKw minus pKb plus the log of the concentration of your base over the concentration of the salt. Now, this P K W minus P actually your P K A, okay? But you don't have those. You don't have a P K A value, so we're going to make use of the P K B value and P K W. P K W actually refers to the ionization product of water, which is so your P K W is actually fourteen. It's always fourteen, okay? So if we want to just calculate the P H, then it's going to be equal to fourteen. It's always 14, right? So 14 minus the pKb, which is 4.74, plus the log of the concentration of the base. What's your base? Ammonia is the base, and ammonium chloride is the salt. So chloride, so ammonium chloride, that's your salt, okay? So the base is 0 0.05. Basically, the concentrations are exactly the same. So the cancel out and log of 1 is is zero, so you basically have 14 minus 4.74, and that ends up being equal to 9.26. So that's the pH of your system. Now, what happens when you do stress this weak base and weak and the salt of the weak base, which is ammonium and ammonium chloride? What happens when you stress it by adding 0 0.01 mole of hydrochloric acid? That's what we want to find out. How does that affect the pH in the system? Is the change big, small, or insignificant? So the way we want to do that is we first need to determine the moles of ammonia and the moles of chloride. So in the previous example where we had the weak acid and the salt of the acid and added the base, we produced more of the salt and chewed up kind of a lot, I mean, some of the equal amount of the acid. But here, because we're adding the acid to the system, what actually happens is your amount of base will decrease, so your top, your numerator will decrease by 0 0.01, and your salt will increase by 0 0.01 on a mole basis, all right? So just for thoroughness, let's go ahead and do that. Here again, our volume is one liter, so your moles and your molarity will essentially be the same, but there's a reason I want to stress that, because there's a difference between concentration and moles, all right? So for ammonia, we want to find the moles here, 0 0.05 molar, which means 0 0.05 mole per liter. And we want to multiply this by the volume. It's a liter, so one liter. Because the number is one, your moles is having the same numeric value as your molarity, and we end up having 0 0.05. Same thing here, we want to do the same thing for ammonium chloride. And the concentration is 0 0.05, so 0 0.05 mole per liter times one liter because the volume is one. We cancel that out, that gives 0 0.05 mole. So our pH is going to look like this once we've added the acid to it. So pH is equal to pKW, which was 14. 
minus pkb which is 4.74 plus the log what's happening now is when you add the acid it chews up 0 0.01 mole of it of the base and it makes 0 0.01 mole more of the salt so we have 0 0.05 minus 0 0.05 minus 0 0.01 Zero 0.01 and this is all on mole level but we, if you divide the mole by one liter you end up with the same value so we can keep it this way and then here you have 0 0.05 plus 0 0.01 once again you should technically divide by the volume but because it's one we can leave it this way so what we end up having now is 9.26 plus the log of 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.06 and so upon further simplification you're going to end up having 9.08 okay so the change after and the way you find that is to subtract the two so we can do delta pH, which is change. And we normally will subtract the lower value from the higher value because the change is what we're interested in. And so we have 9.26 minus 9.08. And that's equal to 0 0.18 units. Quite nicely done. So we've done, when it comes to the change in pH, we've looked at how it's different when you have a weak acid and a weak base and then a weak acid and the salt of the acid and you stress it with the base or when you have a weak base and the salt of the base and you stress it with the acid. So you may want to pay attention to these differences. Uh, most of the differences happen in terms of what the equation looks like. That's one. But also what happens to the base when you add the acid in terms of decreasing the amount of base and how the salt amount also increases then you see how it's different for the acid as well so just review it one more time if you need to go through it and if you have more questions leave them in the comment section and i'll get to them as soon as i see them all right so we are making steady progress going to do a few more examples and by the time you are done you'll be on your way to mastering this concept so here question is saying I mean, it gave you more or less a prescription. And it says, calculate the pH of the following buffer. So you have a sodium phosphate dibasic. It gave you the amount in grams, 6.2 grams. Then it gave you the sodium phosphate monobasic. It gave you 4.5 grams. And it's supposed, it gives you the pK. So the pKf value of sodium phosphate is sodium phosphate on the basic is 7.21 and serves as an acid in this buffer so it tells you what the acid is the acid is the monobasic right those are key phrases and then it gives you the molecular weight of all of them as so molecular weight of sodium phosphate on the basic is 120 and the diabasic is 142 and it's also important to stress that we are going to end up using the version of the and the acid back equation that is suitable for weak acids and weak base. So what that will look like then is your pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the concentration of salt to that of the acid. So unlike the previous questions where we were given the values of the concentration here we do not have that what we need to do rather is calculate it okay and so the way we calculate it is we let's start off with the sodium forceped monobasic so let me just write that out here so sodium let's use na phosphate and monobasic i think everybody can understand what is going on here. so monobasic the, the diabasic so monobasic, to calculate that, we need to make use of the idea 
that your concentration is equal to moles over volume and moles is given as mass over molecular weight so we can actually say concentration is equal to mass over volume times molecular weight okay now this volume has to be in liters otherwise it doesn't really work to be equal to 4.5 grams divided by molecular weight of the monobasic which is given as 120 times the volume in liters now your preparation is a thousand ml a thousand ml is essentially equal to one liter so we can multiply this by one liter so the grams cancel out the moles go to the top and what you end up having is 0 0.0375 mole per liter or molar or molar value okay molarity so we can do a similar thing for the diabasic so let's do that here so for the diabasic we want to calculate again. so concentration is essentially going to be equal to your mass of our molecular weight times the volume mass is given as 6.2 grams molecular weight is 142 grams per mole that's from here all of the values are from the question okay times one liter the grams cancel out the moles go to the top and what you end up having is 0 0.0436 molar okay or moles per liter so we can now proceed and use the equation your ph is going to be equal to pka pk is given as 7.21 so 7.21 plus the log of the concentration of the salt so what is the salt this is the salt so 0 0.0436 divided by the concentration of the acid which is 0 0.0375 now this is going to be equal to 7.21 plus according to my calculator log of 0 0.0436 divided by 0 0.0375 is going to be equal to 0 0.0665 and that essentially is equal to 7.28 all right so we can go ahead and do one more And here the question says, what is the change in pH? Well, what is the pH change in the buffer in the previous question? If three milliliters of a uh, five molar hydrochloric acid solution are added to the buffer, assume negligible volume displacement by the hydrochloric acid. So this is actually a continuation from the previous question. We do recall what the pH is for that one we calculated that to be it but here we want to find what the change is so once again our system here is a weak to the salt of the acid so we're going to still use pH equals pKa plus log of concentration of salt over concentration of acid Now, from the question, we did calculate what those values are. We had 0 0.0437 for the salt. So, this was, from the previous question, this was 0 0.437. 0 
zero four three seven and then this was essentially zero point zero three seven five but now we are going to stress the system by adding some amount of asset to the to the system right so we have five molar and we have three milliliters so we want to calculate what this is in terms of moles that's what we need to do so i'm going to put here the moles of HCl which is being added because this time we have to calculate it in the previous questions we just were told either 0 0.01 or 0 0.2 but here we want to calculate what the moles is so we start off with five molar which is five moles per liter and we want to multiply this by the volume now the volume is giving us three milliliters so three ml but notice the units are not the same so we want to convert this to we want to convert the milliliters to liters so a thousand milliliters is one liter the ml cancels out and basically what you have as your value is 0 0.015 moles all right so what's going to be different here is when we rewrite the equation so our ph is going to be equal to the pKa and once again the pKa from the previous question was given as 0 0.7.21 actually plus the log of the concentration of the salt so the concentration was 0 0.0473 if you multiply that by one liter that will give you 0 0.0437 actually 0 0.0437 now what is happening here is when you add the acid then the amount of your salt is going to decrease by a corresponding mole value so minus 0 0.015 and then your acid is going to increase because you just added more acid to it all right so here we have 0 0.0375 plus 0 0.015 now once again these values originally were molar but almost per liter and we multiply them by one liter and that's how we are getting these moles okay because our volume is one now when we do this what we end up having is 7.21 minus 0 0.26 and that essentially is equal to 6 0.95 so the ph after you stress the system is 6.95 and so the change in ph is going to be the difference between the ph in the previous example and this ph okay so change in ph is going to be equal to the 7.28 that we had in the previous example so if you just need to go check it just stop it rewind and go and check the ph but we had 7.28 and we subtract this ph from it 6.95 and that's going to be equal to 0 0.33 units so i hope you found this video tutorial useful if you did be sure to like it and share it and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Uh, my job here is done for today, but yours has just begun. And I will see you in the next video.